ito, I am just going to talk about a brief intro to statics, a short recap on some topic, and one sample problem in the end. So, let's start. In mechanics, ang pinag-aaralan natin dito ay mga action of forces. We are trying to describe or predict yung mga effect nila on material bodies. And yung mechanics is nahati sa tatlong branches. Number one, yung rigid body mechanics, deformable body mechanics, and pangatlo, yung fluid mechanics. Obviously, this subject, statics, is under siya sa rigid body mechanics. Meron two areas na bumubuo sa rigid body mechanics. Yung statics, na kailangan na at rest yung isang body or under siya ng constant velocity. Meaning, in equilibrium siya. Well, in dynamics, ang pinag-aaralan dito ay mga bodies na in motion. Let us go over scalars and vectors. If naaalala nyo pa, scalar quantities, it only possess magnitude. Hindi niya kailangan ng direction. Unlike vector quantities na it requires both magnitude and direction. This is an example of a vector. Itong kabuuan niya, kabuuan niyang haba, it represents yung magnitude. The head or the tip ng arrow, it indicates yung sense of direction. Sinasabing equal yung vectors kapag pareho sila ng magnitude and direction. And vectors add by the parallelogram law. Ina-add natin yung two vectors to form a resultant vector. If meron kang two components, A and B, kailangan mo lang i-join yung tip nila ay mean yung tail para maging, para maging concurrent. And from the tip ng B, you're just going to draw a line that is parallel to A. The same din sa tip ni A. You're just going to draw a line that is parallel to B. Yung diagonal na form in this parallelogram is going to be the resultant. We can also add vectors A and B by using the triangle rule. Na kung saan vector B is added to vector A in a head-to-tail way. Yung resultant na makukuha is from the tail of A from the tip of B. Kung mapapansin nyo, the same R is going to be the result when vector A is added to vector B. Therefore, vector addition is commutative. In adding more than two vectors naman, yung result is hindi pa rin nagbabago no matter how you group yung mga individual vectors, which follows yung associative law ng addition. Sa case na collinear at mayroong same line of action yung components, Nagiging simple, scalar addition lang siya. When subtracting vectors, pareho lang din naman except na nag-iiba yung direction niya. As you can see dito, maliit lang yung r na nakuha natin when b was subtracted to vector a. Unlike kapag inad natin sila, Ito yung magiging direction ni vector B and mas malaki yung makukuha natin na resultant. So, when cosine law, an example, itong triangle na to, hinahanap natin yung side ni capital C. So, ang magiging formula natin dyan is C is equal to square root ng A, yung one side, squared, plus B, 
yung other side squared minus 2 multiplied dun sa given sides A and B multiplied sa cosine ng opposite angle nung hinahanap natin na side. Ito nga C. Pareha lang din kapag hinanap natin yung side ni A at ni B. Sine law indicates naman na ang isang side over ang sine ng kanyang opposite angle ay equal lang din sa fraction ng isang side at kanyang opposite at sine ng kanyang opposite angle. Now, let's answer this problem. The screw I is subjected to two forces F1 and F2. Determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. Given yung value ng F1 and F2 na 100N and 150N, meron ding two angles na given which is yung 15 degrees at 10 degrees. Gamit yung parallelogram law, ito yung magiging itsura and dito naman is yung triangle rule. Para makuha natin yung 65 degrees, nag-minus tayo sa 90 ng sum ng 15 degrees at 10 degrees. Automatically, na 65 degrees din yung value ng angle na to. For this side naman and this side, 360 degrees yung kabuuan niya minus 2 multiplied by 65, itong dalawa, over 2. Ang magiging sagot is 115 degrees. Gamit yung cosine law, itong side na to yung hinahanap natin, which is yung FR. So, square root ng 100N, yung isang side, squared, plus 150N, squared, minus 2, multiplied dun sa given sides, 150 and 100, multiplied sa cosine ng opposite angle niya, which is cosine 115. Magiging sagot is 212.62 ton. So, pwede nating i-round up ng 213. And since nakuha na natin yung value ng resultant, pwede na tayong gumamit ng sign law to determine yung theta. So, 212.6 n over sa sign ng kanyang opposite angle, sine 115 is equal to 100 n over sine theta. Ang makukuha natin ng theta is 39.8 degrees. Ang value naman ng phi is going to be yung theta plus 15 degrees. At ang magiging value nito is 54.8 degrees.